But these guys point out some problems with modern Jerusalem. As I told you from before, Mr. Alton Johnson, that if you read your Bible, there are some problems there with the modern land. If you read your Bible, it just don't fit. And if it don't fit, you must have quit. Come on. Let me, let me school you a little bit, Mr. Alton Johnson. Come on with it. I'm going to school you a little bit so you can learn something. Let us learn on our way to learning, <laughs> as someone would say. The time frame that we're going to be talking about today is presented here, the very end of the late Bronze Age into the Iron Age, the very beginnings of the Iron Age, of course, is when iron first, appear, first appears as uh, an important material culture item for making tools. So there's our framework, the Egyptian Chronology is also very important here because it has a lot to do with the story I'm telling today. Anybody recognize this place? You're back here. That was quick. So here's Jericho in your backyard. Uh, by the way, the word Jericho means uh, the place of the moon. Yerech, Yericho, Yerech. It means the place of the moon. It looks like the crescent moon when you look at it from the cliffs above. Uh, and here is I. Uh, these are places that we know that we can excavate and have been excavated, and we visit them and we see things. At Jericho, excavations took place already at the beginning of the 20th century, and what was found? Well, according to the biblical chronology, around 1300, 1250 BC, there should be a massive destruction because according to the biblical text and the biblical chronology, Joshua destroyed it. Guess what? No destruction. There is a destruction from about 1540 BC. But after that, the town was most, for the most part abandoned. There is no destruction. So already back in the 20s, Garsang said, hmm, there's a problem here. And Captain Kenyon went back to dig it, and she found the same problem. And this was already a bit difficult. Okay, so there's a problem with the location. There's a problem with the location of Jericho. Not, yeah, Jericho. There's a problem. Why? Because there weren't any battles that he could find in that territory. So, so that's one issue right there by itself. If we don't go any further, a problem. With the location learning something as one of the guys says on that way to learn i know i'm not saying it the way he does but i like the little saying anyway now remember he's not talking Joshua about jerusalem 11 to 12 and they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword utterly destroying them there was not any left to breathe and he burnt hazor with fire and all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did joshua take and smoke them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. But Professor Dr. David Ellen, again, again, and I'm seeing some of you guys saying that this guy's a Zionist, right? Now, remember, again, <laughs> Teo Ministries believe that these people who are Zionists, the Ashkenazi Jews, and all of them. Those are occupiers of Israel. These are the people that we're not supposed to trust. The black Israelites are not supposed to trust Zionists and Ashkenazi Jews and people like that. But he's getting he's getting his information from them to prove the history of him. That doesn't even make sense. That 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 makes literally no sense. But let's continue. Stated there was no sign of a battle. But we're supposed to believe that's the land. But we talking about Jerusalem, not Jericho. But now he don't went to Jericho. You all gonna make excuses for it, you ain't like you all do everything else. You all gonna make excuses, you ain't, because that's what you do, because you don't believe the Bible. And let, and let me go ahead and put this out here. What he's doing is very dangerous because what he's trying to say is that what the Bible says 
and what we're finding in, in archaeology, because basically what he's trying to say is that these people that's in Israel are, or these people that's in Jerusalem, they have been deceived by Emperor Hadrian, just like he said on Brother Berean's channel, that they are they have been deceived to think that that is the real Jerusalem. And he believes that Jerusalem is in Africa. Keep that in mind. That's what he believes. But he's listening to people who are totally against what he believes. And he's against what they believe, but he's using their information to prove himself. I can't even, I can't make this make sense to anyone. I, it, it doesn't even make sense to me. It really does not even make sense to me, but let, let's continue. You want to let's have continue. Christmas tree, that's why you want to celebrate. Straw man argument. No one's talking about Christmas trees and no one's talking about Halloween. No one's talking about all of these other holidays that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But this is what, this is what people like Tao Ministries like to do because they're false prophets. They don't, they, they have no idea what the Bible says. So they'll throw in straw man arguments and insults and paint everybody with a broad brush. When us as the, what they call the UA community, the urban apologetic community, whenever we're talking about them, we'll say not all Hebrew Israelites believe in the same thing. Have you, I want you to think about something and ask yourself this question. Have you ever heard one of these guys say not all Christians believe in certain things? They like to paint us with a broad brush and they get mad when we paint them with a broad brush because when they start to say other things that is outside of the Bible, we're saying that there's a pattern between you guys and these camps. This is what you guys do. Oh, don't paint us with a broad brush, but they'll paint us with a broad brush. Like everybody's running around here, uh, you know, celebrating Christmas and Easter and, you know, Thanksgiving and all of that stuff. The only thing that I don't celebrate is um is is um halloween and that's actually today i forgot well, i don't celebrate halloween but you better believe <laughs> the night of thanksgiving like a tradition in my house and that's been in my that's been in my family's tradition that night of thanksgiving i'm gonna go get that tree we putting that tree up so anybody that's offended by that i'm sorry you can unsubscribe now but I'm, you know, I'm putting that tree up and it ain't got nothing to do with my salvation it ain't got nothing to do with uh, me worshiping the tree and me not knowing that it that that Jeremiah, I think it's Jeremiah 15, they like to always throw up. Come on, man. But anyway, let, let, let me get off my rant. I'm gonna I'm a rant later. Bring Halloween because you don't believe the Bible. Straw man We're argument. All different from us. Yeah, we sure are. Well, let me continue. Let me continue. We're gonna bring some receipts, unlike you all do. Let's see the receipts. This is where most of these settlements are. And this coincide with the biblical text to a large extent. A lot of the descriptions that we have in Joshua, Judges, and Samuel take place in that area, the biblical text. And the hatched area to the north and the south are less densely populated, but there are settlements there as well. When we look at the oscillations of settlements that were figured by Finkelstein in the 1980s, we find that there is a fairly low settlement uh, intensity in the earlier period in the Middle Bronze Age, it goes way up and then it drops way down in the Late Bronze Age, there's almost nothing and then in the Early Iron Age a period that we're talking about mostly it goes way up, once again back to the levels of the Middle Bronze Age so there's this tremendous spurt of settlement circa 1200-1150 BCE and one of the things that we scholars have tried to answer is what is the explanation for this spurt of settlement that includes these material culture features that I showed you just before. Why does this happen? Well, the so the question is why the changes in population? That's the question he was asking, right? Because we know during those particular times that there was a certain amount of people, 12 tribes living in there, but it wasn't consistent in population for that time. So once again, the question is, why the difference? Now, we don't got way off of Jerusalem. He ain't even showing. They're not even talking about Jerusalem right now. Not even talking about Jerusalem. But we're supposed to be talking about Jerusalem not being in Israel. It's supposed to be in Africa. And he still hasn't addressed that yet. 